And good morning. Welcome to the Out and About Show. Focus on Stafford County today on 1590 KVGB. I'm your host, Steve Webster, as once a month we get to talk about all the great things happening to the county to the south of us. And joining us on the program today, as she always does, Carolyn Dunn, Stafford County Economic Development Director. And Carolyn has brought a guest with her today, Mary Jo Taylor. She is superintendent for Stafford USD 349, both in the uh, program today. Ladies, thanks for coming in. We've got a lot of good things to talk about today. And before uh, we talk about some of the things that uh, Mary Jo is involved with, Carolyn, uh, let's get the jet. You've got a lot of things. Yeah. As they say, a lot of irons in the fire down there in Stafford County. So, uh, give me some updates on, uh, what's taking place. One of the things I wanted to give an update on is, um, the tax credit campaign. This was a two year campaign that just wrapped up in December. And, uh, we were able to raise a total of over $304,000 wow. for housing construction in Stafford County. And we're just, um, tickled pink about that and want to, acknowledge and thank all of the contributors that made that possible. A full listing of those contributors is on our website, but um, there were a number of people local and otherwise that, that made that possible. So with that, we have constructed a duplex in the town of Maxville and we'll be constructing a house in the town of Stafford in the, in the coming year, hopefully able to move on to a third house as well. Have you identified property? I mean, where you want to put this at, and and uh, is that is that coming together? Yeah, we have two lots in the town of Stafford. Um, those were made available to us by the city of Stafford following the last um, tax sale. So these were properties that had previously had delinquent tax delinquent dilapidated houses on them. They've been torn down, and and the lots are now ready for redevelopment. So I think this is kind of a um, been a good system too and that we're able to bring back to productive use um, some property that um, ha hasn't been productive for some time and um, we we're also able to uh, be more conservative in what it costs to build things by the fact that we are using locations where there are already streets constructed there's already utilities we didn't have to expend all of that and um, so with that we're we're Glad to make a little bit of progress. That is great. And Mary Jo, I'll bring you in on this right now because as a superintendent of a school district, recruitment of teachers is always big. It's hard to bring new teachers in and young teachers with families if there's no really good place for them to live. This has got to be the start of uh, exciting news in Stafford. It is. Uh, part of my job is, or one of the hats that I wear is that I'm also on the Economic Development Committee. And so we think along these lines, not only in teacher recruitment, but in recruitment in general for our community. Uh, if there's a nice place to live, obviously you're going to, you know, recruit somebody a lot easier than if there isn't. So it just fits very nicely together. And uh, the property's already, of course, the uh, the duplexes already built in Maxville. Mm -hmm. And they look beautiful. Well, I think they showed really well. We had an open house. Um, I think it was in late October. I, I kind of lost track now, but um, we got a lot of good feedback from that and have some new tenants in there. And um, I think it's working as it should. Well, I think that is great. $304,000. Congratulations, by the way, for doing that. It's always when you come up with a new idea, this is going to work really great. Okay, now let's see. Uh, uh, hope it works. You I got mean, it. You it, do. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just, it's human but, nature. You know, but... Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You have to you have to be willing to take some um, measured risks. And um, fortunately, there's a group in economic development that's willing to do that. So we're, we're trying. We're getting out there and, and trying. This is uh, outstanding news. Uh, Carolyn Dunn with us, Stafford County Economic Development Director. Mary Jo Taylor, uh, Superintendent for USD 349 Schools in Stafford. We want to talk about what we'll call it an innovative school. Kind of tell me about this and course i know mary joe's got plenty to say on this as well carolyn you know i almost feel like mary joe should introduce this because <laughs> this has been something that she has really had the vision to help create over a number of years and um so really i just think mary joe would be the best one to explain how this has gotten started well this is a business partnership uh, it provides education but it's also developing a new product and new commerce for stafford county all right mary joe okay tell me all about it <laughs> Well, again, in thinking about how the prosperity of the school and the community go hand in hand, uh, another colleague of mine actually and I were discussing this, and the idea just 
was born, really, is if what if your students would come back would your students come back to a small town? Would they're, they're familiar with it. They might be the prime candidates to move to your town or another town. Uh, they're comfortable with it. They know that they can get raise their families in a nice environment and get a good education. So that thought led to, well, what's the barrier? What's the barrier of coming back to your community? And that is making a living. Are there jobs available? So the idea was born, then why don't we teach high school students how to be entrepreneurs and start their own business? Uh, so what was available to us in 2005 was uh, a law about charter schools. So we actually started this as a charter school, and this is a, a location that is on Main Street. It's not at the school. It's on Main Street. Students actually have an individual learning plan, and, and they start up their own business. This is not a simulation of a business. They don't play a game of what if I, you know, do this or do that. They actually start a business that's in, compatible with their interest. Uh, they have a business plan. They're given a $200 loan from the school, and then they are set to work on to make their business um, profit-making or not. They I've, pay taxes, oh, yes. right? They, oh, yes. They do all the things that real business people have to learn to do. And this started in 2005, is that right? Yes, it did. And we ran it for, I believe, three years as a charter school, and then we uh, changed uh, and we wrote a pathway, and I don't know if your listeners are familiar with pathways. We used to call them vocational classes. Now we call them career and tech ed classes. And so we changed over because this is a, a hands-on doing experience for these kids to go downtown, have a storefront, run their business, make a profit, and and actually have this experience. It was really interesting because we got a tour of that as part of the Leadership Golden Belt class, and to see very focused young entrepreneurs showing us how they got this going. And that, that would be the seed center, right? That's right. And then we, um, there was an addition to that offering at the school system when um, a possibility came up to develop a uh, culinary arts pathway. And you can maybe... Culinary arts. That's interesting. Yes, culinary arts. Um, we've started to have the mindset of here we are in Stafford County, and what is our main, what do we do in Stafford County? What's our main uh, concept? And it's agriculture. Sure. No matter what bent it may be, you may, we, we sell, we buy, we plant, we grow, we fertilize, we, we uh, run livestock. We do all these, we store, you know, what, we, what it is, and we transport it. So in line with this thinking and along this line of entrepreneurship, why shouldn't we also be cooking it and so that's where the idea for the culinary arts came and it's uh, talk about some of the kids that have been in this program well this is only our second year with the culinary arts program it started last year and it was our beginning year and then next this year we're actually full force running uh, the students who are in it pro probably initially enrolled because they like to eat but they they like they found that they, they like to cook. Uh, they have an exceptional teacher. Her name is Kim, Kim Unruh. I just have to throw that out there. Kim Unruh, she's a great teacher. And they have so much fun doing their hands-on cooking, learning, eating, that uh, it's been a very successful enterprise for our high school. Where, where did some of the funding dollars for this go? I mean, for to dietitian and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, there have been two different grants that have helped um, develop this concept that we're going to talk about today. One is that as the culinary arts program was being developed, um, there was some funding that helped um, supply a commercial kitchen. And that helps out the stage. We talked about could a commercial kitchen be used not only for um, preparing food as a restaurant or a caterer does, but also it could be used um, for research and development as um food manufacturers do. And we also have a food manufacturer in Stafford County. Um, so could we look at partnering with them? And, and Dr. Taylor can tell a little bit too about the idea that that is a requirement of the, the career pathways is that there are partnerships with, um, with local entities. Okay, go ahead and hold that thought. We need to take a break here and we'll be back with more of Focus on Stafford County right after this. 
Welcome back. Focus on Stafford County today on 1590 KVGB. Carolyn Dunn, Stafford County Economic Development Director, in with us along with Mary Jo Taylor, Superintendent for USD 349 in Stafford. And Mary Jo, I want to back up just a little bit and, and to where we were before and, and talk about, you know, talking about all these initiatives and all these great ideas. But uh, this all started with a, a pretty significant grant that uh, made a lot of these initiatives possible, didn't it? Yes, we became aware of an RPOS grant, and that is an acronym for Rigorous Program of Study, available through the Kansas Department of Education. And so we decided uh, that we wanted to set up a a pathway uh, in hospitality and tourism, and culinary arts is part of that. It fits into that particular pathway. And in order to do that, one of the things we had to do is identify a lot of community, business, and education partners. So we have 20-some partners. And just to name a few, I'd like to start with, uh, we have agreements with Barton County Community College, Kansas City Community College, North Central Kansas Technical College, and Fort Hayes State University. So actually, a student at Stafford could take culinary arts classes and get a certificate and then go seamlessly onto the these other educational places and and it would all connect with one another they could they could get uh, become a chef at various levels uh, using these this pathway that we have set up we have some business and industry partners that have been very significant in our success so far and that includes all of the uh, restaurants in Stafford uh, the restaurant in Hudson which is the Wheatland Cafe uh, the Stafford County Farm Bureau Association, uh, and very significantly, the Stafford County Flour Mill. And the Flour Mill, we actually have had a project that has launched off of this that is entrepreneurial. So we have a full circle going here. This is something that just didn't work. But I said, ah, that's a good idea. I'm going to make a few phone calls this morning. This is all going to come together. It did. <laughs> no, no, we, we spent several months planning this and applying for the grant. And then after we received the, the grant, we actually, this was actually done in 2011, we received the grant and then we had a planning year. So there was one entire year of doing staff development with our staff, uh, collecting information, uh, learning. They actually have gone to culinary arts school several times, uh, Mrs. Unruh and some other teachers have, and learning how to create this kind of a program. No, it didn't just happen. Where did this idea come from? It, I mean, to come up with this entire concept that we're talking about here, because it's quite innovative. Uh, I mean, where did the, the idea originate and, and how did it go forward? I think the germ of the idea happened that we have a board member that's very interested in this. But again, it goes along with the philosophy of food, uh, growing food, uh, just making the full circle. And then it also is compatible with the idea of what can I do when I leave Stafford? I can go anywhere and become a chef or become a teacher of chefs or any level that I want to take it. Or I could come back to Stafford or any place in the county, and start my own restaurant or at, or cooking-related business. Okay, because this, and Carolyn, you can get in on this too. Did you have community presentations? I, I'm just thinking, this is thinking out the outside the box, and that's one thing Carolyn has been great about with Stafford County Economic Development. You come in and present this program to somebody, they might tell you that they you know, look like you just arrived from, from the moon. I mean, I mean it, it's so different. I mean, how did you present this? Well, the the first step in the, in the project that we're going to emphasize today is that, and it, this was Carolyn's idea, is that we approach Stafford County Flower Mill about A, being a partner, and then not only on paper, but an actual partner in a product that they're developing. And, and it turned out to, to go very well. And um, I'll let you tell about the project. Well, I think part of the, the thinking that, I at least um, brought to it was, could we use all of these wonderful things to give students an even more enhanced experience in entrepreneurship, in in business-to-business type entrepreneurship? And um, probably some of my background may have played into a part of of writing a a particular proposal, but I'd worked in marketing um, for a multinational food company and saw how they worked through um, research and development in a culinary kitchen and, and launch products and said, you know, I think we've kind of got several of the components here that we could pull together for, for a project. And we applied for a grant and 
Um, what it paid for was um, some technical assistance in helping develop a new product. So there was a, a food scientist that helped the, the formulation of this new flour product um, tied in with something that Stafford County Flour Mills has been working on for a while, which is to um, specialize in a, or offer a specialty flour that's made with white whole wheat. So it um, has the nutri nutritional value of whole wheat flour, because, but because it's white wheat, it doesn't have the darker color. Um, they've also installed a new grinder that grinds it more finely. So it, um, it has a, a much smoother texture and is, all in all, more accepted by people who may resist um, a whole wheat product. So kids, often they like to have white bread. This is um, whole wheat bread or whole wheat flour that um, meets, meets um, the nutritional requirements of, for example, the, the school lunch program. So tying it all together, we're able to um, develop a product with, um, with the assistance of a, of a food scientist. Um, there was also a dietitian that um, consulted in this project, worked with the flour mill to um, have the product. Um, they also had the strategic advantage of being a company that um, already has distribution in major food service um, companies so that when a product is developed, there's a hope of actually getting it to market. You know, we can, we can get it um, in distribution channels um, is this going on now? I mean, is yeah. So the kids, the kids have developed a product. It's actually, um, you know, it's it's a, um, a a wheat product that has um, a couple of extra ingredients added to make to, to enhance its um, baking qualities. Um, it will make rolls, pizza crust, cookies, whatever. Um, and they're targeting the product to um, school food service directors. Um, so. Um, I can let Dr. Is, Taylor tell about a really... Is this available right now, though? I mean... Within the last month, um, I think that the, the product was kind of finalized about the beginning of December. Um, the pro Part of what was um, factoring into it being available, too, was the idea that all the equipment was being installed at the mm -hmm. flour mill to um, properly grind the product and so forth. So it's it's been evolving, but just about in December is when it's um, become available. Um, the students have started presenting and marketing it and had a really um, nice opportunity in December that I'll let Dr. Taylor expand on. But we're now at a stage where we've got some sales leads and the students are going to be meeting with food service directors, making sales calls as professionals do. So this is that experience of what is business. To How business excited kind of are you, Mary Jo, right now? This is this this got to be the big time. I mean, it's something you said started a, a few years ago. Oh, I'm I'm over the moon excited about <laughs> it. Um, and I want to talk for a moment about what Carolyn referred to as kind of a, a culminating event to launch this product. Um, in December, there was a convention uh, in uh, Overland Park, and it was the Kansas Association of School Boards. So the clientele that attended the convention were mainly school board members, all from around the state of Kansas, and superintendents and spouses that would come with them. And so our students had two projects that they were slated to do. And the first one was very labor intensive. They arrived a day before the convention and they brought all this flour with them from Stafford County Flour Mill. And they were allowed to use the, the culinary kitchen at the convention center and they baked up 500 dinner rolls so that we would be fresh that morning. And they also made little patties of honey butter and had on their jackets and their caps. And, and they presented this as a vendor. So as people were going through the vendor show, the product, uh, that were offered that that you a lot of times have at a convention, they would smell the bread, stop there, could get a, a, a sample of a roll. Two pound uh, flour sacks were also offered up with the roll recipe. And then as the person uh, was sampling the roll, there was a student with their iPad taking a survey. What do you think about the flavor of this roll? What about the texture? What about the color? So on and so forth. So at the same time we were selling the product we are also coming up with a survey that gave us um, feedback on our product this is actually the second survey too that the students have done they also did taste tests with um, their peers 
looking back into the fall. So all of this is giving us data too, that as we go to sell the product, we can say, you know, we've, we've tested this, you know, as they do in corporations. This, we have some um, indication that this will be well accepted by the people that will be consuming it. And um, so That's, it's been fun. This is just really an incredible story. We're going to take one more break. We'll come back for our final segment right after this. Welcome back. Final segment of Focus on Stafford County today. Carolyn Dunn, Stafford County Economic Development Director, has been with us along with Mary Jo Taylor, Superintendent for USD 349 in Stafford. Okay, we've been talking about this unbelievable entrepreneurship initiative, and we've talked about the, the students going to Kansas City and marketing this and, and beginning sales calls, going with the students. What are these sales calls? Uh, it's probably not down to the local grocery store, I wouldn't think. Well, that's part of the learning process. I mean, for you them could, too, but you know, might want to go to like kind of, a Kroger or something like that. <laughs> well, it's a two step process because um, the distributors that serve schools will be the ones that actually buy okay. the product. But we've talked through the idea that, you know, distributors sometimes are hesitant to take on a new product if they don't have some kind of assurance that will actually move through their business. So um, part of what will make that sale more um, likely is that if we go first to the food service directors that um, buy their product from that distributor and, and establish that, yes, they are interested in buying this product and will bring in a certain proposed quantity or whatever. And, and uh, so we'll first be dealing with the meeting food service directors at schools and, and um, telling about how this is a product that um, not only meets but exceeds new, the new school food service requirements and, and um, you know, several of the other selling points. The kids have um, developed a sell sheet, so that has been part of what they've learned about. They've um, spent time developing a logo. They spent a lot of time thinking about what kind of look they wanted it to have and... Um, and so the, 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 the continuation of this will be that um, hopefully we will establish some sales in some of the major food service distributors like, you know, the names we see, Cisco and U.S. Food Service and um, various others that are in, in Kansas. Um, part of the advantage of working with Stafford County Flour Mills is that they're already delivering product there. Um, it makes it more feasible for just a pallet, say, of this product to be sold in um, Whereas, you know, otherwise it'd be difficult to get just a pallet to um, a distributor. So some of these things are just kind of coming together nicely. Um, the vision, I think, is that over time the students can continue to be a sales agent. Um, oftentimes in, in um, food industry, you'll see brokers that represent a manufacturer's product to distributors, and the students can continue to serve that function, um, do the marketing and some sales, and receive a commission that will... Um, continue to sustain the, the culinary arts and, and seed program. So the school's going to get be getting some of this as well then? Just as any other food broker would, mm -hmm. yes. There will be a commission paid so, to I mean, this you, program. You had, high school students become ex-high school students. Junior high kids become the next the next wave. So I guess that's you've, you've got a lot of entrepreneurs on the way up, I hope. I we, think, we hope so. That, <laughs> that's the goal. And, and it's a been a nice surprise to us how well these two programs have come together the entrepreneurship and then also adding the culinary arts it makes us look to the future and think okay now what else can we do to complement these efforts as well in enhancing student learning well congratulations once again this is just a really a really neat story any I'm running out of time here today anything else that you want to add before uh, we have to let you go today so we can go to news at the top of the hour I don't, I don't know. We are just really excited. I just think that there's no limit to how much this can grow. Um, and I just think that it'll be fun to, to work with it and expand it over the next few years. Okay. Well, it, the only thing I'm disappointed about this whole thing today, where's, where's my three roles? Okay. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> you come back next month and we need, because you've, you've seen the body shapes around here. We eat, we eat a lot of rolls, okay? We need something healthier, okay? 
<laughs> thanks for coming in today, guys. And Mary Jo, thanks for uh, your time. Congratulations. Welcome. Keep doing a great job down there in Stafford County. That's going to wrap up today's program. Focus on Stafford County. Thanks to Carolyn Dunn and Mary Jo Taylor for being with us today. Stay with us. News coming up next here on the Mighty 1590 KVGB. As always, have a great day, everyone.